Okay, so we often hear about postpartum depression in women, but did you know that dads can go through similar um, circumstances and situations? Well, to explore the ins and outs of paternal depression, Professor of Child Development, Maureen Sams Vaughan joins us this morning. Morning, Prof. How are you? Morning, Prof. I'm great. Good to be here with you. Good to have you here with us. As we approach Father's Day, we often hear that um, fathers don't get the kind of big up that mothers get. There's not enough of a brouhaha made about Father's Day as, a, as a, there is about Mother's Day. Um, you folks have done some research. Um, interestingly enough, I, I read where fathers don't think. Fathers are not made to feel as if they're important enough in their children's lives. Yes, you know, and there's a long history of this, you know, we start off from in, you know, in, in childhood when, when boys are young, um, mother, um, girls are often engaged in child rearing much more than boys are. So, you know, they get accustomed to being around children and we don't engage them as much in the process from early on. And then this, this continues, uh, but in terms of the depression that fathers feel, the, the research that we did, and I'd like to just contextualize the research, we were talking to um, fathers of children born between July and September 2011. This is a study, a major study at the university called the JA Kids Study. And we, um, we spoke to 3,400 fathers, which is one of the largest samples of fathers, you know, in research in this field. And we asked fathers how they felt just after the children were born. And uh, they told us about the feelings that they had. And uh, our fathers are very similar to fathers across the rest of the world, where about one in every 10 actually have features that are suggestive of depression. The reason I say suggestive of is because we, we do not have the capability to diagnose depression fully in a questionnaire but we have indications, we use a screening questionnaire, and that indicates that these men are at a higher risk of being depressed. And what are some of the reasons they would have given? Or what were you able to glean within the parameters of what the survey could unearth? Do you know that the, the main factors associated with depression in fathers was the relationship quality with the mother at that time and that's not again that's similar to what has been found across the world and it's not about the relationship status it's not about whether parents are married or whether they're in a common law union it's not that it's about the quality whether the parents have a good relationship with each other yeah. and the all the other factors that lead to people not having good mental health were also at play so fathers who didn't have a close circle of friends, um, who didn't have family that they considered themselves close to, uh, these fathers were the ones that were more likely to be at risk for paternal depression. Okay. You are quoted as saying fathers do get initially, initially depressed and a proportion are initially unhappy or have mixed feelings about the pregnancy. Um, but wouldn't the parents talk about having a child before or no, not necessarily. No, not, not at all. When it comes to uh, pregnancy planning, a lot of our pregnancies take place without actual planning. And so when we spoke with some fathers about how they felt when they were first told that, um, you know, their partner was going to have a baby, you know, there were persons who responded with shocked, you know, um, astounded, they, you know, and, and so sometimes a lot of times pregnancy planning actually doesn't take place and then you have to have this this adjustment uh to the fact that fatherhood is about to happen and so it's it's something that we have to address with our with with our young men and our young women about planning appropriately for pregnancy so that it isn't so much of a shock because you can imagine that if persons are saying that they that they feel shocked um, that they would not have done adequate preparation, that they might not have attended some of the support classes that are there to guide you through through pregnancy. This is we, we were interviewing men at the at the birth of the child. Oh, at the birth of the child. Yes, that's when we were interviewing them. But we asked them about how they felt when they were first told. Right. The, the good thing is 
that after men felt shocked and, and concerned and um, all these feelings that they had, by the time the child was born, 90% of men were reporting that they were happy with the pregnancy. Okay, well, that's, there was still, that's good. There was still, 10% is still, is still a big number. <laughs> but yeah. What about the gentleman who, who um, complained about a, a decrease in libido? Did that feed into the, into the depression or the symptoms, the signs that they were um, dealing with mental um, wellness issues? Yes, but not, but, but not as much. It was more about the, the kind of interaction that they had. And, you know, years ago, we only used to consider maternal depression and how maternal depression interacted the lives of children. And we know that when mothers are depressed, children do not develop well. We, yeah. we now know, too, that when fathers are depressed, children do not develop well either. And one of the studies done in the United Kingdom that followed children from birth to seven years showed that at seven years, when fathers were depressed, the children were more likely to be aggressive, to be defiant, to be in, you know, in, in trouble at school. Um, they were more likely to be giving trouble at home. And this was linked all the way back to what was happening around the birth of the child. Um, but, but also with continued continued relationship difficulties where the parents are not getting on right. and parents really need to understand that when they don't get on um, that it impacts the lives of their children and the health of their children yeah. their children's mental health and once mental health is affected then you're going to have academic performance affected children are not going to do as well at school so it's important for for parents both mothers and fathers to understand about how that relationship impacts their, their children's yeah. development. Professor, did some of these findings surprise you? I asked that question because, yeah, all right, so maybe I didn't expect to have a child, but after I found out that my wife um, is pregnant, do, should we not come a little closer together than it having a problem with me or anything like that? Well, sometimes, the, uh, sadly, sometimes the fact that of, of having a child does not repair that relationship. That's why that's why counseling uh, and so before you get into a relationship, especially if there are challenges, is really, really important um, because, you know, some people feel that the presence of a child is going to is going to fix everything. And the presence of a child doesn't that doesn't fix parents problems. <laughs> right. Parents have to seek the help and support. And this is a message that we want that when we when you have relationship problems, understand how it is going to impact that child that you love and understand that you need to go and find the kind of support. Prof, I'm curious the, if the fathers to whom you spoke were aware of the areas of support. You spoke of support classes and outlets and so on. One, were they aware? Two, were they willing to seek it out? Because the other thing is that we say our men don't talk, certainly not about stuff like this. Yes, and guess what we found when we asked men who they were more likely to speak to they, they, they actually were more likely to speak to their mothers really <laughs> Rather, yes yes and so um grandmothers are are really really important grandmothers of children are really important um wow. really important in in the in the support system because that's where that's where the men went back to more so than more so than their circle of friends yeah. interesting that's, that's very interesting, interesting to me Okay, so how to cope? Let's give gentlemen who may be watching, who may think um, they are suffering from, from um, what you call it, paternal depression or, or are likely to. Uh, we have some, some, some um, outlets here for you, social support mechanism, uh, mechanisms. Well, we don't have paid paternity leave yet. <laughs> but we need to. Yes, something that we've been talking about. But do you see that happening anytime soon, Prof? I think, I think once we get, um, you know, more wider education in the public about the implications for long-term development of children, because when, when there is paternity leave and men are more engaged in the early aspects of raising a child, then they are more likely to continue. But sometimes we, we, we exclude men mm -hmm. um, and we, we exclude them sometimes because of the problems in the relationship. And we exclude them sometimes because we don't think they know enough about, about raising, raising a child. And it's important for us to ensure that they're, they're, they're included. They're, they're, their role is not only to provide finances. Their role is to be there for the child and the mother. 
um, throughout the child's life. Right. Yeah. Right. Thank you Familia, so much. Can I just finish the points, produce? Yeah. Familial and partner support and reinforcement, praise and practical advice during the father's attempts to parent his family, education about family life, especially during pregnancy, childbirth, and early infant life, infant care, and commonly occurring infant problems, and support for female partners with postnatal depression, which is of great use in helping the man himself getting out of depression. So sharing those points just in case anybody needs them. Thank you very much, Paul. Appreciate you stopping in this morning. Professor of okay. Child Development, Maureen Sams Vaughan. Stay safe, Prof. Um, Thank you for highlighting this. Yeah, man. Our pleasure. All right. As we continue on Smile, would you move abroad for love? We pack our bags after the break. Well, they're not going anywhere because my love is right here. <laughs> Thank you,